In this tropical weather update, we have something brewing potentially in the central and northwestern Caribbean for early November into the middle portion of November, as many models have been continuously indicating not just one, but two tropical systems. So taking a look at the GO-16 RGB satellite imagery provided by CyclonicWX.com, and as we do take a look at the Caribbean here, we do have a couple of areas to watch. Part of this whole monsoonal trough that should not even exist for early November, but once in a while when we have a very active MJO combined with very warm sea surface temperatures, things are for sure to pick up pace in the tropics with development. So we have an area down here that we're watching. We're also having an area down over here across the northeastern portion across the Caribbean, including for Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. But that's not all. The National Hurricane Center seven day graphical tropical weather outlook in Miami, Florida has three areas now highlighted. Just literally a few days ago, there was only one or two areas highlighted. So down here, of course, we have that 3070. That's that red area that we have in the central and northwestern Caribbean. And then over here, we have a 10 and 20% chance. Let's kind of highlight that. Actually, it's considered about 10% right now, but that could get upgraded a little bit more in chances. And then we have one near the Azores Islands. This has a medium 40% chance of tropical development in the next seven days. So yes, the tropics are picking up pace here for early November, which is a bit unusual. So with that being said, here's a look at the GFS model, the Global Forecasting American model as of the 18z run so this is the very latest information that you're going to find here on the youtube channel until of course the 0z model comes out tonight but in the meantime there are two areas that we are watching this area and this little bad boy over here in the southwestern atlantic and it's these two areas that are going to make things a bit interesting to say the least so let's go forward in time here all the way through Saturday and even into Sunday here on our GFS model. This is in fact in a Sunday. We have again this area right here. This is the one that's grabbing the most attention on the National Hurricane Center. And then of course we have two other areas. This whole confluence zone with some vorticity or spin in the atmosphere is making things a bit interesting here on this model. But it's when we get into Monday when things get even more concerning on the GFS model. This is three days out, folks. This is not hyperland. This is not fantasy land by any chance. This is actually a realistic forecast on the GFS model not 100 percent accurate but at least accurate enough where the nhc has a 3070 in their outlook so this is monday november the 4th it's hard to believe it's november doesn't feel like november in the tropics for a lot of you that are watching this video but nevertheless it is early november and as we go forward here yes look at that very close call over jamaica by the afternoon hours of November 4th, that would be Monday, where we have a big old fat high pressure area. Now with this big high ridge to the north, the system is not gonna go this way, it's not gonna go this way, it's likely to go now back to the west, and that's what some of the models have been showing over the last several runs. In fact, the GFS is pretty much the most aggressive here at showing a hurricane perhaps by Tuesday afternoon into early Wednesday morning on November the 5th and the 6th. By day five, that system moves over western Cuba, bringing quite a bit of rainfall, flooding, and strong tropical storm to near hurricane force winds. But this is going to enter the Gulf, perhaps, and it's not going to end very well. In fact, this is day five. Five days, folks, and the NHC um, probabilistic forecast goes out to seven days so, yes, this is a scope of possibility. In fact, five days is pretty much the furthest we could really go out for re, uh, for vigility on our numerical output on these models. And so, with it showing it moving into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico by the middle of next week, yeah, this is going to get people's attention, I'm sure. And not right now, of course, but down the road, yeah, we got to watch this. We really do. Because look what happens once we go into Thursday and even into perhaps on Friday. We don't have just one system to watch, but we have two systems to watch. Yes, we have a formidable tropical storm or hurricane pretty much where Milton was. 
I mean, come on, like, right smack dab, but only this is moving directly west instead of Milton moving directly east, north of the Yucatan Peninsula, and then guess what? We have another area that we were mentioning briefly at the beginning of the video, that area of convergence with thunderstorms. That's going to be the area that we are going to need to watch. And that could become our next area of interest, maybe another tropical depression at the very most. But look what happens here. By the time we go beyond 180 hours out, do I rarely go out to 10 days? But anything, and I want to make it clear in this video, Anything beyond day seven, day seven is fantasy land. Well, not really extreme fantasy land, but it's more uncertain in the forecast. In fact, the Canadian model is a bit more realistic than the GFS model, to say the least here, not in the short term, but in the longer term. This is two days out for Sunday again, lots of rainfall potentially over portions of Jamaica. So keep that in mind. Maybe a tropical depression, a storm, or even a hurricane based on our short-range forecast on the GFS model. And then after that, it gets into the Gulf, but this time in the Eastern Gulf, and it's more realistic outcome here. The systems that are going to do this, um, like the Canadian shows, has it moving this way instead of our um, GFS model has it moving over here and then turning up and curving like that, if that makes sense. So the Canadian in this case is a bit more realistic in the next five or so days. And as we go forward here, we have a weak tropical depression or storm approaching the Big Bend of Florida, which I do not understand why nature likes the Big Bend of Florida. This has been a really hard hit already this hurricane season with Debbie early on in August. Then we had um, then we had Helene in mid to late September, and then we recently had Milton moving over Central Florida. I just don't understand why and why and why this portion of the Gulf Mexico seems to be getting hit a lot this year. Probably because of the steering patterns, the lane, the open lane of escape seems to be this portion of the Gulf and U.S. But now when we look at the icon model, it is also showing something a little similar to our Canadian model. Let's go and put this forward. Again, keep in mind, there is our system. They're approaching Jamaica. This is in about three or so days. So we know pretty well by now that the GFS, the Canadian, and ICON, and I'm about to show you the nav gem here in a little bit, showing us a similar outcome, including the European model showing us, too, some moderate to heavy rainfall. And so before we actually do look at the ICON model, we'll be looking at the Euro because, again, the Euro is a teeny bit more accurate than the icon model and then we'll show you that so you can see moderate to heavy rainfall by early next week over jamaica that's what the european model is showing and then when we go forward it struggles to develop the system and remains a tropical depression at the very most this is five days out and then look what happens it moves into the gulf it's nothing it literally is nothing but it does move into the central and northern gulf here and impacts say portions of louisiana with that enhanced precipitation but you don't see a blockbuster fantasy land hurricane like the gfs model indicated so now let's take a look now at the icon model what does the icon show us well we just showed you this moderate to heavy rainfall over jamaica is a risk here for monday into monday night into tuesday and then this system well well in the five day forecast here it gets into this far southeastern gulf of mexico and might become a compact tropical depression or storm but when we look at the 12z run it's a little bit further to the west and you can see similar to the Canadian model showing this move to the northwest, very close to the coast of Florida, bringing lots of heavy rainfall and some breezy enhanced trade winds to the northeast of the system. But the system does not uh, develop very well because of the wind shear and drier air. And then we have another system behind that that we were that we're going to need to uh, monitor closely, and then maybe another one long thereafter. In fact, we look forward. You can see another compact system, but that's for another video for another time. But you know what? We cannot forget about our nav gym model. This is the Navy naval model that I also like showing in my videos because no one really shows us in your their videos in their on their channel. So let's be unique here and show it in this channel. 
So this is the NavGen model, not the most accurate model, but also not the worst model to look at. And it does show something pretty similar. This is the westerly outlier on this run, showing maybe a tropical storm, maybe a low grade, well, a uh, high grade tropical depression or a low end tropical storm getting close to Jamaica here, bringing lots of rainfall. We talked about this. Um, this is four days out, so it's a little slower on the nav gym, the Navy model for Tuesday morning, but nevertheless bringing impacts. And then it gets into the Gulf of Mexico in about a little over five days. So this would be November the 6th and the 7th. By the way, your election forecast uh, for the most part for a lot of people in the southeast looks pretty good. Doesn't look too bad at all. And then look what happens. This gets into the Gulf of Mexico and becomes a stronger tropical storm with uh, winds maybe 40 to 70 miles an hour, bringing lots of heavy rainfall. You can see even for the deep south. Look at, we got a couple of others, one here and another one over here approaching the Windward Islands. This one is a lot more uncertain and I'm not really putting a lot of money into it, but this one right here might be the one that we need to watch that could actually develop into something like a tropical depression or our next tropical storm. Now, the reason why we're gonna have to keep an eye on the Caribbean and the Southwestern Atlantic over the next week or two is because of a favorable environment that is moving over the Caribbean here. You can see all of this green here on your screen. That's upward motion, more thunderstorms, more convergence at the surface. We got darker blues here, we got more darker blue here, and more area. In fact, this area right here could be contributing to that hurricane that the GFS model is showing in the next two to four days in the northwestern Caribbean into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. Here's another look at it. This is from the University of North Carolina showing us the favorable environment here. All this teal blue color indicating upward motion, thunderstorms, convergence at the surface, and a thermodynamic favorable environment for tropical cyclone genesis to develop so all the way through my birthday my birthday is actually the 15th not the 14th so i did not want to confuse you all on that it's actually friday so two weeks from tomorrow we have favorability going on over uh pretty much much of the atlantic and then look at this it changes and becomes more unfavorable all that brown there and then it gets over into the indian ocean over the western pacific again where we may have to watch for more typhoons to develop later on in the period and so with this being in mind we do have to watch the the deep tropics such as the caribbean the gulf of mexico and the southwestern atlantic at least through my birthday. But if you found this video really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share this video with their family and friends on social media. And also you can check out my Twitter page down below this video where you can get more updates on the tropics near you. But anyways, that is gonna do with this tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, November 1st, 2024. Have a great rest of your day. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.